Hi, I'm Helena. I'm one of the acquisition specialists here at my art broker, and I'm here to speak about collecting blue chip prints and multiples. So printmaking actually started in China in the Han Dynasty with kind of the advent of woodblock printing and then in Europe there was a real kind of flourishing of it uh, during the Renaissance with artists, you know, such as um, Dürer and Rembrandt really pushing the medium to its full potential and these were using techniques like, as well as woodcut, engraving, lithographs and they really kind of utilised the medium in order to kind of fully disseminate their works to a wider audience. Printmaking's significance really lies in its ability to translate work, artists' visual repertoire to a wider audience from early on actually and also kind of nowadays it makes it more accessible and is a really great entry point into the art market if you're looking to kind of start that collection. So I think artists really look to prints. I mean, firstly, it's kind of a wonderful medium to use. It's actually kind of often very physical and it allows them to really kind of broaden their visual language. You know, the kind of the marks you'll make in in a copper plate or in a woodcut can be very different than those you can achieve with a, with a pencil or, or a paintbrush. Artists are really drawn to printmaking to allow them to make multiple copies of their work and also disseminate their work to a wider audience. It really allows them to maintain relevancy in the cultural market and allows them to kind of produce works in a shorter period of time. The most common and traditional forms of printmaking use the technique of either of using an acid to etch into a copper plate and then you have the application of ink which is then pulled through a printing press and <laughs> there are different forms of that. There's obviously aquatine etching and there are also lithographs which uses oil and water really to create, to create an image. There is also screen printing which is a very physical process in which you're literally pulling ink through a screen in order to transfer an image onto the other side. And then more recently there's been amazing advents of GK printing at really, really high resolution images. And so for Hockney, for instance, for his iPad drawings, we see these, these images being transferred via um, the GK printing technique. Within the classical printmaking technique, within the etchings and lithographs, um, you know, each print and each impression is often kind of subtly different as the plate is pulled through the printing press at, you know, at different speeds with slightly different weights by a different printmaker. And likewise, the inking up of the plate prior to that can leave a different impression and different colour in the finished work itself. Limited edition prints are valued for their authenticity and exclusivity and they are often numbered and signed by the artist. They're created in a set run and once that run is complete no more prints from that edition will can be made. An open edition is just an edition which isn't from a limited set and so it can be kind of replicated. Um, for some earlier prints such as copper plate prints actually you can't produce them to that extent because the copper plate or the plate itself will lose um, its ability to really create that crisp and clean impression. But for other prints, such as especially with now the advent of digital printing, um, it's much easier to produce open editions and kind of larger scale editions of things. And screen printing too, you can produce in larger, larger edition sizes. And edition sizes can vary in number, you know, some things are from very small editions, some things are from edition of say 20, and then you can have other works which are in edition up to 600. And often, you know, things which are in a smaller, smaller edition kind of have an increased desirability. Um, and it's really something you should look for as a collector kind of when purchasing these pieces. And there are also further editions in a way that could be made. And these are the artist's proofs. The, or the commerce prints, which um, you know originally gifts from the artists and which are not were not originally sold. So you can also have printers' proofs and trial proofs, and sometimes these are edition two, um, but these are often uh, more exclusive and more desirable within the wider artists' oeuvre. Whilst a conversation around editions is you know incredibly significant in the value of the work. Um, 
condition is also vital when it comes to collecting. The art should really be stored in in a kind of archival, you know, a frame made of archival materials, and this would be an acid-free backing and under UV glass, ideally, in terms of, you know, if you want to display and kind of store the piece, one should really kind of look at the full condition report of the work to understand the condition before making any purchase. Alongside the condition of the print, we should also be paying attention to the artist's signature and also the provenance of the work and any exhibition history it might have can really add to its value. And also we do recommend regular inspection of the work just to ensure that the condition is being maintained. Collecting blue chip prints and multiples involves seeking out works by established artists with proven market records. Here at my art broker, we focus on works by 20th and 21st century artists who, for which we've seen real demand, both at auction and privately on the secondary market. And we provide all of this data, which allows you to make kind of the most informed decision about your investment strategy. Collecting works by blue chip artists also ensures that you kind of maintain the authenticity, provenance and integrity of your collection. Prints and multiples are original works of art in their own right. They involve the physical creation by the artists themselves and also, you know, in many cases, a collaboration between the artist and their printmaking studio. There is also often a hand finishing element to various different prints and of course they are often signed and numbered by the artist themselves. Understanding this is really crucial when it comes to looking at and investing in blue chip prints and multiples. This really helps new collectors appreciate the artistic value and merit of prints and editions.